Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and today we're looking at the Dell XPS Full HD or FHD as it's abbreviated. Much like the XPS 13 we know and love, nice Ultrabook, Full HD 1080p IPS display. Good looking, backlit keyboard, magnesium alloy, aluminum lid, carbon fiber bottom, nice Ultrabook and we're going to look at it now. So this is the latest generation Dell XPS 13 Ultrabook. This is not a touchscreen, however. Now it's available in full HD model, 1920 by 1080 pixels IPS display, 350 nits of brightness. Certainly very nice looking. And for those of you who just really despise the thought of touching the screen, or maybe you're not even going to use this Windows 8 UI here very much, it's perfectly fine. You can see here, because we have full HD, it's nice. Dell has enabled stacking more tiles up so that you don't have to have them running off the side of the screen as much, but for those of you who just want to get straight to the desktop. So here we are in standard Windows 7 desktop mode. Since this is your everyday Ultrabook, you can run it just like a Windows 7 machine if you want. In fact, corporate buyers can actually buy this with Windows 7, but obviously we have the Windows 8 model. That's where we're looking at here. Uh, largely, mostly, pretty much unchanged here from your last XPS 13. Same lovely magnesium alloy keyboard deck here with a soft touch black painted finish. Solid piece of aluminum for the lid and on the bottom we have lovely carbon fiber. That cool thing that Dell does right here. This is carbon fiber with a neat texture on it. Under this little metal plate here is your Windows key and serial number. They kind of hide that. Here's your vents. Little rubber ridge acts as the foot. You get some warmth here. We've just been playing some games with this and it gets reasonably warm here, but carbon fiber does not transfer heat the way metal does. It's one of the reasons why Dell's using that. So it doesn't ever get burning hot. One thing I can tell you is from the previous generation, XPS 13 we reviewed, this guy runs cooler and quieter. Our last XPS 13 we had a pretty exuberant fan. If we take a look at the lid, there it is. Same big Dell logo right there. Nice aluminum lid, good looking wedge shaped machine, 3 pounds, 2.99 actually. And that same kind of two-tone finish because you got the carbon fiber wrapping around here with that little bit of a checkerboard finish and then the metal. And this frame over here is also aluminum. Here we have a USB 3.0 port, this one supports charging. Mini display port so you can drive monitors that are higher than full HD resolution and you can get an adapter for mini display port to HDMI, don't worry. And this little button right here shows you the charge level for your battery. There's four little LED indicators if you poke it in. It's pretty hard to poke it in. But it will show. Large sturdy hinge back here. Again, really not a change from the last XPS 13. And here's our charging port, another USB 3.0 port, and our combo audio jack. That's it. There is no full size SD card slot. There's no micro SD card slot. There is no Ethernet on here. If you want Ethernet, you're going to use a USB Ethernet adapter. And taking a look at the keyboard here, the same lovely island style keyboard that we really enjoyed in the last XPS 13 that we reviewed. Chiclet keys here, very nice key travel going on, relatively speaking, for a thin machine. Good tactile feel, a little bit damped so they're not rattly clicky things. Got a big glass trackpad here, made by Cypress. Still, again, unfortunately, where Cypress is just not our favorite trackpad manufacturer. Sometimes it just seems to not pick up gestures, uh, even just simple moving around of the, of the single finger, but that is what it is. I'm sure there's going to be some driver updates. And we did manage to trigger a few gestures doing that, but it can be a little bit flaky compared to most Windows 7, uh, Windows 8 trackpads, rather, that are very good. You got your FN key row up here. You do have to hit the FN key if you want to activate things like your brightness and multimedia controls. Oversize enter key, oversize backspace key. We have a delete key here, always handy to have. And of course the Windows key that takes us back to the modern UI right here. And here we're looking at the backlit keyboard in a nearly dark room. It has a couple of levels of backlight setting available. Very, very nice white, even backlighting it frames the keys themselves and the letters light up. Good stuff there. Given all the metal, the magnesium alloy, the carbon fiber, the Gorilla Glass, you don't have to be really careful with this. It's like a ThinkPad in that respect. It can really put up with a lot of chunks and thunks. Dell is going to continue to offer a regular HD resolution. That's your 1366 by 768 without IPS. It's pretty much like the last gen, XPS 13. That's going to start at 999. For the full HD models, it starts at $12.99. Interestingly enough, that gets you a Core i7 ULD CPU rather than a Core i5, 8 gigs of RAM, and 128 gig SSD drive. Now for $13.99, you get the model we have here. That's the Core i5 with 8 gigs of RAM and a 256 gig SSD. And then for 
$15.99 you get an i7 and a 256GB SSD. So pretty much, if you're looking at full HD, you're also looking at 8 gigs of RAM. We're not complaining about that. That's certainly good. It's dual channel RAM, 1600 MHz, low power RAM. Now this also has slightly updated Ivy Bridge CPU. It's still the same 17 watt. It's not the new low power CPU that will be coming out in a couple of months for some models. But it's 100 megahertz faster in each case for the i5 and i7. So the i5 is the 3337U rather than the 3317U that we've seen. So it's 100 megahertz faster. Starts at 1.8 gigahertz, and it's got turbo boost up to 2.7 gigahertz. And then there's also an i7 3537U available, and there's also an i7 version available. That's the 3537U CPU. Now here's the thing. Dell sent us a late but still pre-production model. This still has a 3317U core i5, so it doesn't have that extra 100 megahertz of boost, but still it's going to be pretty representative. We don't expect to see a whole lot of difference in performance there. And on PC Mark Vantage it scored 4517, which is about where you would expect an Ultrabook with a fast SSD and core i5 processor to benchmark, so pretty much standard stuff there. And for our Windows Experience Index, that's a scale that goes up to 9.9. .9. You can see for Processor, we've got 6.9 for memory, 7.4, that's pretty good for memory. 5.5 for desktop graphics, 3D graphics is 6.9, and disk data transfer rate is 8.1. Both the 128 and the 256 gig SSDs are Samsung's fast PM830 SSD drive, the same thing that Dell did with the last gen XPS 13. Really fast performer there, good to see that. Now, since this is a full 1080p display and a 13.3 inch screen, that means that your icons and your text by default are going to be kind of small when you're running in desktop mode. When you're running in live tile mode, Windows scales everything up, so everything is pretty large and easy to see. So right now, we're, we've just got 100% normal desktop size, and you can see the size of the icons and the size of the text. It's a little teeny. If you want to bump that up to 125%, you get something that is more readable, easier to see. Now, we've already enlarged the mouse cursor, too. And now we've moved everything up to 125% scale, and you can see the icons are something more like normal, and text underneath the icons is more readable. So with a full 1080p display, we have text here in IE and desktop mode that is pretty darn teeny, but it's very readable because the display is very sharp. So for those of you who really hate to ever see jaggies on text, that's good news. For those of you who are older and don't have really sharp eyes, you're probably going to end up enlarging everything, to be honest. But still, for those of you who edit graphics and don't mind doing so on a smaller display or HD video, it's nice to have the full 1080p experience there. Now we're back in our live tile interface. Everything is pretty much scaled here, even though Dell has set it to compact the, the live tiles a little bit, so pretty easy to see everything. One nice thing about the display, for those of you who use the last XPS 13 that didn't have an IPS display, color gamut was not all that wide. Uh, you know, viewing angles were not so great. This 178 degree viewing angles, very good viewing angles, and color gamut is greatly improved too. Dell claims 72% of Adobe sRGB, which is pretty darn reasonable, and that's a lot better than the 45% on the older XPS 13 with the 720p display. The machine has dual band Intel Citrino Advanced N6235 Wi Fi ABGN. And we've so far had good reception with this on the 5 gigahertz band and 2.4 gigahertz. It also supports Intel Wi-Di wireless display for those of you who just despise those HDMI cables. It has Bluetooth 4.0. There is no NFC here, however. Inside, we've got a battery that's sealed inside, typical of Ultrabooks. That's usually the case. It's a 47 watt per hour 6 cell lithium ion polymer battery. And Dell claims 9 hours of use, which is pretty darn good for a Windows 8 machine. So far, Windows 8 touchscreen machines are not so good on the battery life. We're still testing this guy, but right now it looks like we may get 7 hours on it. But we'll have that in our full written review. There's a 1.3 megapixel webcam up here with dual array mics. Works nicely with Skype. And it uses Waves Mac Audio 4 with two 1.5 watt stereo speakers. Pretty good volume. We'll play some video so you can hear that. Dell's going to make Nuance voice recognition available as a free download machine. So for those of you who are into Nuance, there's some good news there. And for graphics, your only option is Intel HD 4000 integrated graphics. Now here's an interesting decision. For those of you who don't despise touch screens and you want to make easier use of the new Windows 8 Live Tile UI and all the gestures on screen, we have the Dell XPS 12 here, which is actually a 12.5 inch IPS display, full HD as well, but it's a touch screen. 
about the same price as well. You can see the difference visually is this one is carbon fiber on top as well as on the bottom, which I think looks pretty cool. It depends on your taste. And this guy is a little thicker because it has the flipping easel design, and we'll compare that now. And now we have them both open, and you can see pretty much almost the same screen size, right? The difference between 12.5 and 13.3, well, it's 0.8 inches. It's not a huge amount. Keyboard is pretty much identical here. Trackpad is pretty much identical. But what you get here is the nice ability to actually touch the screen. And this guy flips. So if you want a tablet, you just do that. Drop it down. You've got a tablet computer. My preference would be the XPS 12. You may be different. Again, for those of you who don't want a touch screen, it makes a difference. Also, the XPS 12, besides being a little bit thicker, it weighs a little bit more. It's about five ounces heavier, four ounces heavier, so just a slight bit more. But obviously more versatile and a better way to enjoy the Windows 8 UI. Since this is a full 1080p display, it's of course tempting to play 1080p video. We're going to stream a 1080p MPEG-4 high-quality trailer now off of our media server and see how it looks. And by default, it's going to play through the Windows Live Tile video player. Here you can also play a Windows Media Player on the desktop if you want, since this is full Windows 8. Nice sounding speakers. We're only at 60% volume right now. Pretty good separation. Nice volume, not too tinny. It stands 12 feet tall. And it's playing beautifully. With razor sharp claws. Good frame rate. And the streaming behavior is good too. And you can see how well the Wi Fi works here since we're streaming that off of an NAS. And the router is a floor away from us and about 30 feet away, so it's doing quite well there with the Wi-Fi. And now for those of you who prefer Windows Media Player instead of the Live Tile application, we've got a plain Windows Media Player as well. So you've got that here. You can put all the codecs in the world that you want to on here. Again, just as capable as any Windows 7 machine in that respect. Likewise, you can do things like run Adobe Photoshop on this, your software development tools, they're all going to run just fine. It's a powerful enough Ultrabook to do those things, and even some light gaming. Certainly, older games are going to play fine, casual games well, and we're going to test out Skyrim to see how it does with something that's more demanding. So now we're going to be a little ambitious and try playing Skyrim. We have Intel HD 4000 integrated graphics here, obviously, and this is the Core i5 1.8 GHz machine. But I think it could be up to the task, and we're going to test out 1080p gaming particularly. We went with the auto detect settings, which it calls low, and you can see what they are right here. We are running it at 1920 by 1080. We have anti-aliasing and anisotropic filtering turned off. And for our advanced settings, texture quality medium, radial blur quality low, shadow detail low, decal quality none, and only reflect sky is turned on. Still pretty pleasing looking gaming experience even with that stuff turned off and we're going to see how it plays. Alright, now we're at level 55 play level and we're in a cave scene. This one's a little bit more demanding here so you can see our frame rates are below 30 fips. Now maybe if we drop settings down a little bit lower it would get better. It's still playable. And it is running at full 1080p. That's another thing. You could drop the resolution down, though. We find that it doesn't make as much of a difference as turning down settings. And now our frame rate's picking up. We're up to 30. Woohoo! A little above. So now we drop the settings down to 1600 by 900 for resolution, and we have set texture detail to low and turned off sky reflections, and you can see that we are a little above 30 frames, going up to 35 sometimes, so that really makes it a little bit more playable. Even when we're fighting a couple of bad guys, we are mostly staying in the low 30s, so not bad for an ultrabook. 
And just to underscore again, this guy runs cooler and quieter. Uh, not that the older XPS 13 ever got that hot to the touch. The carbon fiber really helps, but the CPU temperatures sometimes could get up there a little on the high end. This guy is running cooler and noticeably quieter. Dell has really got the fan tuning down. In fact, I find this a little bit quieter than the XPS 12 even. Now, if you plug it in and you're playing a demanding 3D game, as best as this can play a demanding 3D game, then the fan is going to kick up and you're going to hear it. It's going to be noticeable. But if you're just doing word processing, the web, even streaming YouTube video or playing some local 1080p video, definitely very quiet. So who is the XPS Full HD for? Well, you know, it's for anybody who wants a nice full HD display. Before it was pretty much the Asus ZenBook Prime if you wanted that kind of display in an Ultrabook, and it's nice to see Dell stepping up and offering the same thing. Now, obviously, this is going to be for folks who really don't want the touchscreen. I can't underscore that enough. Windows 8 is a lot more fun to use with the touchscreen. It's, it's bearable with a mouse or with the trackpad, but it, there it is. But I know that there are some of you who just want to be in that Windows 7 desktop environment, just, just right here, nice and friendly and familiar, and you're not going to be using the live tiles much and you don't care about the gestures. So it's for those of you who really don't care about the touchscreen much as well, obviously. It's durable. It's powerful, as Ultrabooks are, generally speaking. Uh, it's not going to be your, your best choice if you want to play 3D games. It's not a gaming machine, obviously. Light gaming, sure. I, I wouldn't pick this to be a, a serious HD video editing machine, though it is capable of doing some video, HD video editing if you want, just not something you'd want to spend 20 hours a week doing on this kind of machine. I would go for a full mobile core CPU, honestly, to do that kind of thing. So that's the Dell XPS Full HD. It's going to be available right now as you're watching it. Available on Dell.com. Probably going to be showing up in stores sooner or later. Certainly a nice ultra book for the money for those of you who don't want a touchscreen but you want a full HD display. Beautiful design as always. Good performance. Solid. Rugged. Carbon fiber. Metal everywhere. Can't beat it. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full review. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.